Well, hey there, Kyle Brotherson here. I'm right by this beautiful new gas gas. This is the 2022 EC300, and it's my first day on the bike. I put about an hour, hour and a half on the bike, and I uh, have some initial impressions. I've ridden a lot of these bikes, a lot of these TPI, KTM style TPI bikes. Uh, this EC300 would be more along the lines of KTM 300 XEW or the Husky TE, um, but it has some pretty cool little differences as I got to ride it. Now, the only thing I did to this bike, I moved my handlebars forward, um, I put tubeless. These are actually not the stock wheels. The st I've ridden the stock wheels so much on these bikes that I put uh, a, a backup set of wheels on this thing uh, so that it would be fast for me to do it with tubeless. I put a skid plate on the bike and I did some just minor little things here and there, just tweaking things. I didn't adjust the power valve and I didn't adjust the air bypass screw, which I maybe will do later, but I just wanted to see how the bike runs. It was my first time with a 2022 um, KTM Husky gas gas setup. And I will say this gas gas runs very smooth on the low end. It's really, really good that way. It's got a smooth linear power. But the other thing that I noticed probably more than anything is how short the bike feels. Now I'm not talking about short up and down. I'm talking about short front to back, like front wheel to back wheel. Something about this bike, this EC300, makes it feel really short front to back. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly. I don't know if it's any shorter wheelbase than like a KTM XCW or the Husky TE. I don't know if it's actually any shorter, but I'll tell you, it feels a little shorter right now. I'm gonna have to measure this to see if it's any shorter because it probably isn't, but there's something about this bike. I don't know if it's the geometry or exactly what it is, but it feels short and tucked in. Feels like I'm not on a full size bike and it was actually pretty dang cool because it just felt agile. It really wanted to turn really quickly in the corners. And when you've ridden these KTMs and Huskies and now the Gas Gas, as much as I have, and I've ridden this platform, the, plat the 2020s, 2021s, I've ridden it a lot. This bike just felt more tucked in front to back. Something else that I noticed after I got the front brake completely worn in was you, they're using a brake tech brake on this. It's not, a, it's not a Brembo, it's not a Magura. This is a brake tech front brake. And I'm not gonna say it's bad, but I will say you have to use a little bit more pressure. There's plenty of feel on the brake. It's not like it's grabby or anything like that, but I will say that you just end up using more pressure. I'm a one finger kind of guy. This brake almost feels like there's a, like a little, bit of a, a little bit of creep before it's fully engaged, and then I just have to pull harder. And I'm really used to pretty much, the, you know, the power that you get and the feel that you have on a, say a Brembo. This does not have as much power. Now, I also feel like there's a little bit of creep on this, like I'm having to pull the lever a touch further. Now that, see, this is a fairly steep downhill. I'm pulling that in a little bit more, um, a little bit more than I'd like. And that, that's fine, the creep is one thing, but I don't have quite the power. Now there's a, there's a fine line. I mean, you don't want the brake to be grabby. And sometimes that's my issue with uh, some of the Nissan brakes that I've had is that you you have like pretty decent feel, the brake's pretty soft and all of a sudden, boom, it just grabs. Um, this one, I wouldn't say it's grabby. There's just not a ton of power there. This isn't a reason not to get the bike or anything like that, but it is just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, gotta watch that pipe, she's still warm. Not quite as, not quite as much power on that brake, brake tech front brake. Um, kind of interesting, you know, it's an interesting choice. Obviously they wanted to do something different. It's one of the very few ways that this bike can be differentiated from the XEW or the TE now. Um, but yeah, can't say that I loved that, but it's, it's not, it's not terrible, but it's, it's uh, just something that I noticed. Also, you've got linkage on this bike. Now, a lot of people will say PDS versus linkage. You know, maybe if you're riding a motocross track, maybe it matters. I'm the type of guy that says, I set my sag the same on most of these bikes, anywhere from 105 to 108 millimeters. This one I put to 106, and I mean, it, it worked beautifully. <laughs> We've definitely got the um, 
wide ratio gearing on here similar well it's the same thing as what you've got on a KTM XCW or the Husqvarna TE on this oh yeah <laughs> on the old EC EC 300 and that front wheel is just glued to the pavement it's so good not pavement glued to the ground it's just absorbing everything all these little rocks and roots and bumps and I love seeing it's like having that red out of out of my peripheral vision you know the front the rear tire stayed planted to the ground my front tire stayed planted to the ground I don't have any complaints with the suspension but I mean if I set up a PDS uh, style uh, rear end properly um, these days I don't have <laughs> I don't have any problems with those either especially like the single track enduro type riding uh, the, the, that I'm doing so I'm pretty excited about this bike this will be a sweepstakes bike when I get the full review done on this it won't be for a while um, but uh, all the bikes that I'm giving away or all the bikes that I review I'll be giving away so stay tuned for that if you want to support dirt bike channel um, you can use my links to Rocky Mountain ATV, Amazon Motorsport. You can buy some gear from me. I buy these bikes at full price so I can say whatever I want about them. Um, and that's the way I like doing business. Um, and then turn around and give them back to you guys as part of kind of like a, a little give back thing. So I think this will be a great bike for hard enduro. Um, I do miss the handguards. Where are my handguards? How come I don't have handguards? So um, no handguards on the bike. Um, no skid plate they don't do but very few people put the skid plates on it is tpi it did run really really good idle is a little bit low so i may do the idle air screw bypass mod but i just wanted to see if the bike would run and i kind of want to see the, the 20 what the 22 valving or i mean the 22 mapping was the fuel mapping and it's smooth it is smooth it is linear it is tractor like and it's pretty special so anyway really like really really like the bike I think I'm gonna have a ton of fun with it and then one of you guys is gonna get this bike eventually so thanks so much for watching please use the links to Rocky Mountain ATV down below uh, if you have questions send me an email kyle at dirtbikechannel.com or customer service at dirtbikechannel.com and either me or one of my assistants will get back to you so thank you so much and leave a single track